Hi all. So um, like um, like yesterday, we come back on Byzantine history, uh, which I'm always glad to talk about, um, and um, and expressly um, on the um, on, on a different approach from the usual. It is trying to um, focus on the Bi Byzantine perspective at the time of the emperor. Theodosius and of his immediate su successors who were <coughs> his sons. Um, and this is a very important moment uh, in the history of the Roman Empire. I call it Byzantine, you know, in the eastern part at this point, but I'm not really a fan of the term. Just <coughs> and just be aware of that. I I um you know I mention it just, you know, as it's it's done still in uh historiography without meaning any um <coughs> negative um um term by calling it this way but just you know to 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 identify better to be more specific in in referring to a certain time <coughs> and a certain space and uh it's and it's mostly about space uh that I want to talk about today as you see here we have a beautiful map of the eastern half of the Roman Empire at the time of the um, you know ultimate partition uh, that happened in fact um, um, at the death of Theodosius by his will. Um, this is the moment in which basically <laughs> the eastern and western part will be administratively separated after a time in which um, they had been reunited from um, previous um, um, divisions and repartitions. Theodosius had embodied, in this sense, um <coughs> as as an emperor, uh, the one who had managed, after years, um <coughs> if not generations, of civil war, to reunite East and West by defeating the Western rebels and by re regrouping all under uh, one ruler, but um <coughs> for reasons that uh, we will be analyzing in part today, um, he eventually decided that the empire had to be split once again. And uh, as we will be seeing, by the way, this was uh, this meant falling into you know a, a tradition that had been set essentially um <coughs> since the time of the emperor Diocletian at the beginning. At better at the end of the third century, that was uh, this concept of uh, you know dividing the empire into administrative <coughs> um, repartitions in order to you know manage it well, but um <coughs> it isn't much of a good solution. It was something you know um, co you know unity is always best <laughs> usually when you when you want to rule something. So uh, when we look at these repartitions, we shouldn't be so harsh, like some people um, used to say. You know that these were weakening the empire because if the empire had remained united, well, they wished that the empire <laughs> could remain united, also because that would have increased largely their own personal power. But since they were not stupid, they also knew at a point that the empire had to be uh <coughs> divided because it was practically not manageable otherwise <coughs> meaning that evidently the, the the political and social structures as, as well the economical resources had um <coughs> had shrunk to the point that ruling over such a huge empire that's based from uh, from Scotland to to uh <coughs> to the Indian Ocean wasn't um wasn't any more feasible for a centralized rule. And by the way, let's consider that the Roman Empire, even <coughs> before the crisis of the third century and eventually uh, splitting under Diocletian, it had never been such a very strongly centralized entity. Uh, many people make this mistake by assuming that, you know, looking at one map of <coughs> the first century's AD equates to look at, an, at uh, to a nation state <laughs> of the 19th century. You know, the Roman Empire, this huge big red thing that you see in maps usually, um, was actually pretty much decentralized in its administration. The, provi the provinces were entrusted to governors who largely did wh what they cared. Um <coughs> the others were military provinces that were instead seats of armies that you know, often even rebelled if they had the chance. So 
everything was more complicated and today we're gonna um, justify in practice um, <coughs> from a political and strategical point of view the decisions to fraction in this sense uh, the empire by making a very uh, important premise that uh, I always um, think it's important to recall that is the point that um, um, when this splitting occurred uh, <coughs> there wasn't anything like two empires. I mean, in practical terms, we can say yes, you know, there were two different political entities from, you know, um, a strictly administrative point of view, in the sense that, you know, th these empires have to be managed uh <coughs> in practice. But um, institutionally speaking, and even ideologically and juridically, um, there haven't, uh, there's always been one and and an only one Roman Empire. Uh, when you find uh, here the the splitting after Theodosius death into the eastern part uh, um, and 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 western part, you know Honorius and Arcadius, etc. It's not that th there were two Roman empires, but the empire was just one, and uh, this repartition was uh, only an an administra administrative division. Um, created by contingent uh, causes that, however, um, didn't have to put in question in absolute terms the, the fundamental unity of the Roman Empire. In fact, even to talk about Eastern Roman Empire, as many people do, um, regarding to the Byzantine Empire, because, you know, Eastern Roman Empire sounds better than Byzantine, they are still wrong because Technically, that was the Roman Empire, you know, after the fall of the West, um, <coughs> there is no end of any empire, but just the idea that, you know, the, the Western part had been uh, englobed, englobed by, you know, other, um, or at least overrun by other political entities. So if you don't have a Western half anymore, you don't have an Eastern one either. And um, it the the concept of Eastern just lays in our mm, you know Western mind, but uh, from a, a Byzantine point of view of the time, um, it was the Roman Empire, um, <coughs> pure and and smooth, and, um, and there is objectively no other historical um, reason to think otherwise. So, just know that the Roman Empire, as such and in 1453 under the, the, the guns of the Ottomans um, and um, that there has never been no, nor a Byzantine nor uh, an Eastern Roman Empire at, at any time um, <coughs> in, in history. Now, um, Theodosius is a very fascinating political character, um, historical character, excuse me, also political obviously has <laughs> been a, a Roman emperor, but uh, um, and uh, how, uh, however, unfortunately, we have not time to to uh, to describe his life. Um, but uh, it's still very interesting, at least for me, to 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 believe, you know, and even to imagine how to be an emperor, uh, to be in Theodosius' um, role at one point, and trying to understand you know, what brought him to opt for this, for what have would have been a definitive um, uh, repartition of the empire, because obviously he didn't know what would could happen in the future. Theoretically, he he could have thought that th the two halves could 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 eventually get together. It, it wasn't the case. But we don't have to think him as, as a destroyer or uh, as a divider of empires. We, we just have to understand pragmatically, and trying at least for as much as we, we can know, uh, historically speaking, why he took that decision. And, um, and, and that was a point, as I told you, that mm, the end of the 4th century, which um, surely the empire wasn't extremely fit. There had been a very, very costly wars. There, there were um, uh, religious problems. Uh, there were other threats coming from the, mm, from outside borders and even from the, the within the same borders. And even though Theodosius had uh, managed to reunite the empire, 
um, you know, he probably saw that the thing couldn't last for long. So he thought of this division between his two sons, but it wasn't conceived as a very equal partition in the sense that uh, it was really, you know, if I, if my father, you know, could give me, you know, half of, of the Roman Empire he, he <laughs> has inheritance, I would be glad of that. But East and West were quite different at the time. And um, and we're going to see, uh, in this sense, uh, what were the options. Because there were essentially two paths that Roman <coughs> that Roman Empire and could take, in this sense. Um, the first one was, um, you know, the maintaining of this um, uh, Ro Roman tradition, Roman imperial tradition, to um, of having a Mediterranean vocation, let's say, um, especially um, respectively to the unity of the empire, because obviously the Mediterranean was this huge um, sea and or better a lake in, in practice, even though I it's still a sea, um, of in into which um, the Roman Empire had expanded I historically speaking. The Romans you know, if you if you see the expansion of the Roman Empire back in the day, you see that what the Romans did was to expand, firstly, into the Mediterranean ba basin, simply because um, this was the area in which the Hellenistic culture broadly meant had spread, uh <coughs> which meant that there were a lot of uh, very wealthy uh, yet divided cities. Uh, there were trade centers on on the Mediterranean Sea. There were very wealthy. Uh, monarchies, we're talking about the Hellenistic kingdoms, successors of Alexander, and these o were all rich praise that obviously the Romans that were on, uh, very aggressively on the rise at that point so as very quick uh, and easy to take. It wasn't extremely easy, but let's say that Romans made it, and if they made it, um <coughs> there are obviously the reasons. Um, I will discuss about them <laughs> as well, I promise. Um, I don't want to let you, you know, disappointed on anything about is uh, everything that, uh, that I hint to in to my to my videos and 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 let's say that the unity of this um Mediterranean empire wasn't broken by by anything uh, uh, at that point you know during the crisis of the fourth uh, of the third century and the wars of the fourth surely you know uh, a lot of problems had occurred w even within the same Mediterranean, that the piracy had expanded, etc. But um, from from a strictly imperial point of view, <coughs> it was a, a very pretty harsh, um, and ideologically and propagandistically, it was a very harsh decision to abandon this um, um, idea of the unity of this huge uh, uh, lake. Um, because um, because the Roman emperors were conceived at the time to be the rulers of the world, and telling the truth, they were right. Because <coughs> today we we you know we have satellites and and we we know more or less you know what uh, you know what the world was like at the time, and and yet we are still amazed by the the geographical dimensions of the Roman Empire. But but at that time, from a Roman perspective, and from the perspective of all the populations that were under the Romans, um, objectively, you know, what the Romans had conquered was the entire world. I mean, certain areas of Northern Europe, even Britain, were considered like the, 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 the furthermost uh, land uh, that, not e according to the legends, not even the, the, the classical gods had ventured in for for how you know savage and, and and far away from civilization they were conceived at the time. So in front of uh, of an empire that is already you know proven by you know these uh, these wars and, and that it's that it's being weakened, the idea of di dividing an empire and especially pointing the horse, especially on one part, as we will be seeing would be considered in 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 remar in markedly mm, <coughs> uh you know um, decadent terms um this idea of decadence is very la relative i i don't want to stress it too much but you know think about even cr christianity being on the rise at that point 
the same Theodosius making Christianity religion of state, well, from a Christian point of view, that obviously saw the church as something and the state as something else. The fact that the state would have this kind of setbacks and needing to, to re, re, uh, reorganize on different bases was seen as a sort of divine um, will to to make it th the empire decline at the point, this was obviously present also in the pagan perspective. You know, the, the pagan ethos was mostly based on uh, the, the idea that uh, you know uh, men are, you know, that the emperors should be great warriors who conquer the world world and then are able to keep it, and that they 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 that if they don't manage to do so it's because they have <coughs> done something wrong to the gods or they have been too uh, greedy and all this stuff. So it's a very courageous choice especially in, in a moment however in which that really can make the difference between you know uh, life and death in many ways. And, and, and there was obviously the other option that was presented to the rulers of Constantinople because you have to think that Theodosius already at this point <coughs> was a, an Eastern Roman Emperor because he ruled from Constantinople in practice. So we are already in a Byzantine age if we want to call it that way. Uh, the other alternative um, was uh, in fact and in my opinion better one also because it's the one that they took and they knew their own world much better than than we do um, and um, and it, uh, this other option consisted into the um, uh, essentially um, the to insist on the territorial partition and to um, you know be guided by eminently political reasons by that in um, in a way to redefine especially one of you know one of the parts of this empire and that is the eastern one in incidentally as the um, as a new power essentially a, a new center mm -hmm. um, that um, as you can see on the map is um, is something very different from you know the the the, the Roman em the, you know of of what this uh, it had been the center of the Roman Empire in, in the previous centuries. As I was saying, you know, the Mediterranean was the core. Here we see instead the eastern half that was conceived conceived as a new power that definitely has um you know a, a vast space into med Mediterranean but that doesn't <coughs> put really Mediterranean at the center of its own um you know, strategic, uh, strategic horizons. Um, <coughs> and we're talking definitely about this, um, uh, for instance, look at the map. Here we have the Mediterranean Sea, definitely, but look up in the north, you have the Black Sea. Now, the Black Sea during the Roman age um, hadn't, you know, the previous age, um, hadn't been much of a very important uh, area. Now it was. It was for many reasons. Mm, definitely uh, look at where Constantinople is and think about all the grain that was produced in the Ukraine back at the day like just like today um, <coughs> and this possibility of having um, uh, you know a, a closed uh, sea like Black Sea is with no with essentially no other very strong competitors at that point um, because here, yeah, there were a bunch of people, inhabitants. Here you see the Western Goths. Then there were other tribes in the <coughs> in the Shitsian plants. But uh, essentially, there wasn't much of a great power uh, infesting the Black Sea, and the, the Constantinople could definitely control this area and and controlling the the mm, that the grain, um, or, um, you know. Uh, the grain trade and uh, the 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 grain um, uh, commerce would be um, you know um, uh, insured by by the <coughs> the Byzantine fleet etc. And then um, you have obviously also the uh, the Caucasus that that was important because uh, the the Romans didn't quite expand in there. 
but uh, if you see here the reserve mania and even the Crimea is quite close so the Caucasus mountains make uh, a shield from northern peoples um, of the steppes um, and it basically contributes strategically to enclose the Black Sea um, and, and other regions of the empire including Asia Minor that uh, is so important at this time um, <coughs> and then we have obviously the Anatolian Peninsula uh, that here you see beca uh, is becoming essentially the center of the empire when you think ab about the, the Byzantine Empire proper we shouldn't think much of a Greek um, thing from the, the, the modern you know, idea of, of, of um, Greek national identity. It was it's something extremely different that had nothing to do with that. It was Greek because it was Hellenic in language, but uh, ethnically speaking, it was made up of a mosaic of different peoples. There were very few Greeks, telling the truth. Um <coughs> and, um, and we can't say that in, in this picture, in fact, Greece doesn't really... Um, doesn't really sparkle pretty much uh, um, because um, um, the um, really the, the the power of Constantinople was um, this position between the Aegean and Black Sea. Now the Aegean Sea, as you can see here, is a sort of lake on its own. Um <coughs> for anyone who has gone on vacations to Greece, especially on sailing boats, uh, you can easily see uh, that uh, there is no proper um uh open sea um in the Aegean um you you can always see land from somewhere be chiefly because I it's a sea dotted by countless islands um and um and therefore it, it and and Greece and, and and Turkey are pretty pretty close so uh it's a sea that you can't control pretty easily and that's really the internal part that matters um, cities like Athens, Sparta, Thebes, and other areas were much of importance throughout this time. During Byzantine history, you can see that the, the, that region in particular wasn't um, it wasn't particularly developed either, and they didn't look the guys from Constantinople in very favorable terms. Nor the area here that you can see in light green over over Achaia, uh, the, the, uh, the dark green. Um, it wasn't much of a developed area. It was a largely mountainous area. Today's Albania, etc. And um, it was, you know, from 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 the west, I it could be theoretically attacked. It happened in Byzantine history that I don't know the Normans at the point invaded those area and those areas. Think at uh, the Iraqian uh, in Al today's Al uh, Albania. <coughs> and um and and it wasn't much of a developed area uh the only big city um of the Byzantine empire after Constantinople would be essentially this um uh, Thessalonica so this city that is on the coast in northern Greece and that obviously expands into the Aegean sea not into the Adriatic or Ionian sea from the other side um <coughs> and uh, and Constantinople was you know um quite um, quite well defended in this sense, the, the were the Dardanelles here straits, where the Battle of Gallipoli occurred in World War I, then obviously the Bosphorus. So, um, really, the, the core of the empire is I is in this area uh, that stands between Thrace, uh, so today's Bulgaria, roughly this, um, uh, oh, mm, you know. Salmon, um, <laughs> salmon uh, colored uh, region here in the map, and uh, Anatolia. Mm -hmm. You can argue that really the, the core of power of the Byzantine Empire stood into the Anatolian um, peninsula and plateau, especially. This was an area that was um, easily defendable. Mm -hmm. The Byzantines would basically hold it against anyone who came from the east all over Byzantine history. And Constantinople was here, very well fortified, well protected from land and from sea. Um, so it was a, a hell of a strategical tradition, uh, um, strategical um, situation uh, and location uh, for 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 the Byzantines. And it's not surprised that you know uh, an empire w w was centered into this asset would last for for so long in practice. And um <coughs> 
and then uh, and this is uh, maybe the, the more problematic part um, this uh, brought um, a different relation with um, um, other areas uh, the Balkans in the north and the the Near East in the south, uh, also Egypt, um, <coughs> because these were very important lands from a strategical point of view and they were lands of frontier. Um, how were they? Well, the Danubian area was largely um, a militarized area. It had been so in the previous centuries um, uh, because of the invasions of peoples coming from the north, namely the Goths, the the Sarmatians and other peoples that dwelled around the Carpathian, uh, Carpathian uh, basin. So the Danube was this formidable natural barrier that had been set by the Romans since uh, the times of, of, um, of Augustus. And um <coughs> it was obviously an area that, that was also mm, relatively backwards to, 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 to obviously this um, Mediterranean, um, um, you know, region around which Constantinople, uh, you know, into which Constantinople was, and this implied a great deal of um, <coughs> military and diplomatical work uh, taking place into that area. Also, because Constantinople, as was uh, remembered before, could be attacked from from the north from uh, from the west and uh, if you see the Theodosian walls talking about Theodosius in fact you quite well understand that then Constantinople was um, uh, was immediately understood to be you know in need to face um, uh, and to expect uh, aggressions from 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 the north and the Theodosian walls placed around the city would definitely hold many peoples many sieges uh, making in ultimate analysis, the same empire to survive for 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 many centuries to come. Um, and um, and the other area is this very very wide and especially coastal region that encompasses Cyprus, um, Lebanon, um, Syria, Palestine, uh, the Sinai, um, and. Um, and um and then arriving to Egypt obviously and these were areas that um were quite developed. They they were actually um the cradle of um of of the let's say the most advanced Hellenistic culture. Cities like Antioch, Jerusalem, Alexandria of Egypt um <coughs> were um extremely important political economical um, religious centers for the empire and and yet they were a bit different you know they they were far away from Constantinople they could quite easily be reached by by sea as you can observe but they were still far away so it would still need um, military expeditions to be mounted uh, to, to, to be waged uh, by sea so something that costed really a lot <coughs> and these reg regions would play on them. They would be always uh, probably the major concern of Constantinople at the time because uh, they were also um, the uh, the wealthiest, um, um, some of the wealthiest at least uh, regions of the empire. And in Constantinople this time, I was mentioning the, the Ukrainian uh, grain, but um, <coughs> this time the, the majority of um, foodstuffs that would arrive uh, to feed the Constantinopolitan um, people would come from um, from the uh, the Nile Valley, so from Egypt, uh, which was obviously and notoriously um, some of the most fertile areas of the ancient world. Um, and therefore, you can understand the importance of keeping uh, the imperial capital well fed. It's the, sti uh, the same problem that Rome uh, at the same time is facing in the West <coughs> relatively to, 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 uh, to Roman Africa, that is essentially today's Tunisia. And in fact, these areas, however, would uh, were pretty much aware of their political um role and uh they would obviously play 
um, their uh, use their weapons against Constantinople, politically speaking, and um, it, it's those areas uh, in w into which, incidentally, um, many um, heresies spread during the period, and 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 the heresies here spread not because in the rest of the empire, you know, everything was fine. The problem was that Constantinople was too far away. So if an heresy spread into Asia Minor, you know. Uh, the Constantinopolitan um, clergy could intervene rapidly in there, but if this happened in uh, in Alexandria, things would be pretty much pretty much rougher. Um, and um, and this is the reason why uh, Constantinople, more than you know, using the Iron Fist, would essentially try to um, to maybe to 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 play on on this to maybe tolerate in part these uh, heresies which uh, however on the long run wouldn't make a good um, a good service to the empire because these regions became to develop um, increasingly this um, even um, regional ident local identities based on those heresies and on other um, you know cultural um, uh, characteristics and at the time of the Arab invasion, a um, great part of these lands would simply give themselves to the Arabs, forcing Constantinople at that time, which was deprived by the Egyptian grain, to rely uh, even more increasing increasingly on the Black Sea. This is what you find, because indeed that was the area from which um, the grain uh, 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 you know, could arrive. Um, and the only major, um, you know, um, quantity of grain that could satisfy Constantinople, Constantinople could arrive. Um, and, um, and therefore you see that um, um, this is, in spite of these mm, difficulties really uh, relative to, to, to the Balkans and, and the Near East, it was a much more rational and compact and, and manageable option for Constantinople to rule over um, over something, let's say. So, um, uh, what we see after Theodosius, so um, along the, the the fifth century, is um, the Eastern Romans to uh, strengthen their position um, into uh, into this area by structuring it by, you know, basically replicating that uh, that policy of um, statal uh, of increasing subtle intervention intervention into local affairs and of um, uh, the process of, s of tying the local population to the um, to the government of Constantinople onto a much smaller yet more rational um, uh, territorial um, area um, and um, and it would play be, uh, you know it would pay back because uh, you know as you see uh, the, um, the 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 Western Empire at certain point would fall, and uh, and the Eastern one would survive on this new basis. So uh, it was probably a very clever move, and the best that could be taken at that time. And by the way, this tells you how probably even though uh, this is very debatable in certain measure, but how um, strategical thinking was pretty much um, elevated and, and refined at this, at this in this time in history. We don't much about strategical thinking of the Romans. We don't have s the sources essentially, but if you really look at those these new transformation I into the late antique world, what you see um, in ultimate analysis is the, the, the rationality of certain and the pragmatism of certain the decision decisions that were taken, uh, which uh, in perspective seem to have been the right ones mm -hmm, for the survival of the same empire, but uh, there is also the West. Now the problem is that when these two empires, um, <laughs> I said two empires, and this is the really the point I want to make. As we have seen, the Roman Empire was conceived only as one, but this division. Um, would bring to um, the um, uh, obviously to to the mm, detachment of the two uh, of the two areas of east and west.
um, the two empires would start essentially behaving even in um, in a positive terms, even though the cooperation was always uh, was always sought to a certain extent. Um, and it's the, um, uh, the 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 stronger part that takes over in this sense because uh, the Eastern Roman Empire, at a certain point, uh, starts even to um, to um, to unload um, its problems um, onto the Western part. Many populations, for instance, were sent. Um, uh, into the West, at a certain point, even you know, weakening you know, the the um, the imperial um, government, especially think about the Goths, for instance. Um, there was obviously a, a substantial suspicion between the two parts, also because they were um, uh, very different, also culturally speaking. Uh, the East would talk these um, series of, uh, you know, Eastern uh, dialects and, and Greek in the administration and in many areas. The West was much more intensely Latinized, yet it had obviously its regional um, uh, differences and uh, local identities. So um, they were two entities that, that were really going to, to be separated. Um, for the same nature uh, of, of the same, and um, um, and and the Eastern emperors um, really didn't care about more than much, at least about the fact that in the West, uh, eventually, um, certain um, uh, Romano-Barbarian uh, monarchies would, would would form. And uh, Constantinople was essentially satisfied just um, um, with a by a, a more or less um, theoretical realism expressed by the Western emperors towards Constantinople, and obviously, as we have seen, there were also influences within uh, the Western affairs. Um, which were very subtle, as we we, we said, there were certain uh, certain uh, you know um, political um, you know mm, plots and interventions, and um, um, and um, um, diplomatical pressures, like um, but even you know minor concessions, you know certain honors that were recognized by Constantinople formal uh, mm, you know um, offices that were uh, entrusted by the East money as always uh, and not least um, um, matrimonial unions mm, uh, which were not just between um, East, uh, the, the families of the Eastern and Western emperors but also between certain uh, Eastern Roman princesses with um, with barbarian um, um, uh, chiefs and, and warlords. So um, I it's a moment in which you un you pretty much understand that what is happening is that uh, the East was taking a path that um, was very much planned, very much uh, thought um, a an East that was very organized. And in the West, um, there was always, um, let's say, left um, on its own in certain measure. Not always, telling the truth, maybe it's better to say that obviously the Eastern Romans did intervene into Western affairs also to save sometimes uh, the, the, the Western affairs um, uh, in certain measures. And they wouldn't succeed all the time. Um, this is also very interesting because at one point um, the same existence of the Western part would, would basically be tied uh, to um, to the um, Eastern military help, and they, this would ultimately fail. And part of the reason why the Western um, uh, half eventually failed was that um the roman e the eastern uh, the eastern roman empire had basically failed to help them um and um and it's also very interesting to see in perspective from from the constantinopolitan perspective to see uh what the west was was seen like 
uh, because the Western weaknesses was definitely perceived in the we in the East, but at the same time, having um, a Western entity, um, not matter no matter how weak, because that was also an advantage. Because you know the the Easterners surely didn't want a, a strong Western empire that could maybe invade and uh, and having ambitions towards the East, but it it was pretty useful even to have just, I don't know, Italy and certain parts of the uh, of Pannonia and of Illyria on, on Roman rule just to have this um, um, sort of um, um, of, um, uh, of shield, of doesn't matter how weak it was, um, that could defend uh, the, the western border of the Eastern Empire from the uh, the Germanic peoples that were um, you know on the rise um, in um, I in Western Europe um, so a situation that really takes its path from Theodosius onwards um, and a path that was probably irreversible because even when Justinian reconquered eventually the um, the the western lands w you see um that uh, first of all it was um you know um uh even a mm, an am sort of maimed reconquest uh, um, a mutilated reconquest in many ways since they they didn't they hadn't reconquered really everything of the of the old western empire and um, and, and, and the Easterners had focused on, you know, just regaining those areas that were more economically developed and that could be reached by uh, by sea. So re, uh, coming back on this Mediterranean perspective that, as you see, was never fully lost deep inside, because you can have a pragmatic side but still thinking great in, in theoretical terms. So you understand that from Constantinople, um, the idea of regaining all um, the um, you know what had been lost previously by the empire was w was always there in some measure, uh, and that that doesn't um, interfere with uh, a more pragmatical mm, you know um, focus on your uh, immediate surroundings. Um, um Yet at the same time, you, you understand, even at the, I, I also at the time of Justinian, that the, the West was um, at that point um, not conceived much, in fact, in territorial terms, but more in social and economical terms. Uh, Italy that was reconquered, Africa and southern Spain, where all lands were, you know, that were quite closer for social and economical um uh, models to the to the Hellenistic world so the one around w uh, uh, onto which in fact the um, the eastern Hemp empire had been decided to 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 re 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 rebuild um, the roman strength um but those um, um those social economical models would be declining would be in certain measure even too weak and even local populations uh, in the West had changed radically from the times of Theodosius. And that Roman unity was um, a bit more uh, of, a m of an old romantic dream than any concrete political um, uh, objective uh, arrived at that point. Uh, so, I I hope I made my point. Um, I I don't know what to add. These are topics that I surely will address uh, other times uh, in the future for sure. Um, but for now, I think it's it's fine. So, um, thank you for um, for for listening to me. If you made it up to this point. Um, if you liked this video, please share it or leave a like or subscribe to my channel to receive further contents. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask uh, either in the comments or in uh, via email. And um, as always, I thank you very much again for listening.
and I wish you a nice time. See you next time. Bye. Oh, and just a PS, I forgot. <laughs> this is the first time I do that. I would, I, I, um, I was mm, about to upload the video, but I remembered I, I skipped one Im very important point of this that I had in front of me all of the time. I was concentrated on the Roman perspective, but I also wanted to to mention the um, the need of the um, of the Constantinopolitan emperors to. Um, to defend themselves from the Sassanids. Now, the Sassanids were this very big and, and very powerful entity into the Middle East. They essentially replaced the, the Parthians um, of the Arsacid dynasty. The Parthians had always been, you know, rather weak, strategically speaking, and, and not much of a threat for the Romans who subdued them. Uh, multiple times. Now, the Sassanids arose uh, uh, as a dynasty at the beginning of the third century, and, b and they were much different. They had even learned um, much of the um, Roman um, military um, technology, so they, they were quite aggressive, even strate strategically speaking. Uh, the Parthians had been, um, you know, teased in, in the ancient world because they seemingly couldn't take. Um, the um, couldn't 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 le um, wage siege warfare because uh, in a certain sense they had arrived from steps that they, they weren't much of uh, city besiegers. The Sassanids were pretty aggressive. So what you see in here from the map very beautifully is how you know close the Sassanid dominions were. Um, the uh, the easternmost line of defense of the Romans was these. Um, the Euphrates uh, River, um, and this area of frontier here you can see close into today's Syria, um, and, um, and 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 from Constantinople and um, and especially holding the uh, holding Asia Minor, um, it was very um, you know it was pretty useful um, to uh, to counter uh, this Sassanid threat. And at a point, the Sassanids would even make it to 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 conquer Asia Minor in Egypt and to even besiege Constantinople. The Byzantines, thanks to their subtle, um, um, you know, system, were able to 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 hit back and ultimately even crush the Sassanids. But just after centuries of very bitter fighting, um, and um, and just. That was just to say that obviously um, having such a major threat from the east um, was a, a very good, um, um, you know, a very good reason to to shift the power of the empire easter. Um, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Then I will be talking for sure many times about the Sassanids, about the Byzantines, and all their wars. For now, I just want to make a bit of a an introductory uh, group of videos to to just set the right premises, if I <laughs> if I can, um, and that's pretty much it. So thank you if you heard even this last part, and um, <laughs> I I wish you again a nice time. Bye.